Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel 101 and today we're going to be doing another motion graphics animation. Uh, this one is by S. Jose and uh, yeah he does a lot of amazing motion graphics work. I think he uses Cinema 4D. So we're going to try this in Blender using Geometry Nodes. So let's do that and uh, you can get the project files on my Patreon page, Gumroad and on my YouTube, YouTube membership page. So I started with a plane and used a circle, a curve circle. And uh, we want to instance some lines onto this so I'm going to use a line curve line and uh, also use instance on points and uh, these are going to be our lines like that. We want to rotate them on the x, x like that and I want to use negative one like that. To get the rotation correct we need to use a curve to points node and that gives you the rotation and we can connect that to that and I'll get something like this. I'm going to scale this down using a transform transform node and scale it, scale these points down or you can just do it here doesn't matter. So if we want more points, we just do something like this. And uh, we can also resample curves because this has only two points and uh, we want more for the next step. The next step is to turn this into a shape of an eye. And to do that, what we're going to do is use a set position. Just create a gradient that goes from zero to one and uh, that has this fall off uh, for the Z. So I'm going to use a combine X, Y here. So I can separate the Z component and use a position node and then I combine X, Y to get the center position, which is zero, zero. And I use vector math to get the distance of these and use it for the Z position. We do need to realize uh, the nodes uh, that will give us something like that. So as the distance, as the distance increases, the Z position also increases. That's what we're getting that. Now we can use some math nodes to cut this. If we use the power, we start to see that bend effect we want, but uh, if you use something like sign, we can create uh, the curve we want. We just need the right amplitude. So I'm going to add a math node or the option to multiply to get, yeah, the angle I want. Now you can also add to this, so until we get the right position. Also want to move this back to the center. So I'll just add another math node after the sign and subtract a value around there and add a multiply to scale this in case I want like that. I think I'm just going to reduce the radius and come back here. Just get the right amplitude. Yeah, I think something like that is good. Now. We need way more points than we have. So let me expose this value, something like that. maybe even more than that, like that. What I'm going to do is just use another set node. And uh, this time around, let me use a combine like this and add some noise to the X. That will give me that. I'll also do a math node to subtract the offset the noise adds. So something like that need to repeat this for the Y as well and uh, do this for the Z as well. The effect is too strong so I'm going to use a vector math to scale down uh, the, the noise effect. I want the center to stay perfect so I can grab this setup where we get the distance of each point from the center and I can use this as I can actually just use this directly here in the scale. So where the distance is close, where the points are closer to zero, they will, the noise will have less effect, especially if you add a ramp on them. You can see the noise is more stronger at the edges than at the center. Yeah, so something like that, I think. If you want, you can even rotate these randomly a bit. So if I add Vector math, I actually have a node, the node here, just add, use add. And uh, what we want to add is some random rotation. Uh, this is a vector. You want some random rotation to the, this, not that much, just, just some random rotation. Yeah, we can animate these, since these are curves, we can animate them using the trim curve. And uh, you can see if I play with the end, I get something like that. If I want to randomize the trim for each, I can just use another random value. That way they don't all end at the same time. So 
something like that and i can expose that as well now let me bring in my timeline set a keyframe there and set a keyframe for 100 okay so we have the path working correctly but uh, if you look at these closely there is there are points on the end of these so let's add that we're going to use the icosphere as the end and uh, since these are curves we can do instance on points and uh, these are going to be our points and the icosphere is going to be our instance now you see we have a lot of icospheres scale them down 0 0.01 okay like that the animation still works uh, but uh, we only want the last point on the curve Maybe this should be 0 0.05. And uh, to do that, we can just use end, end point selection. This will give us the start and end point. Now we just want the end point. Perfect. And uh, if we join this to the trim, we get the tracer particles like that. We just now need to give them some thickness. Do that. Let's just use our curve to mesh. And uh, we can use um, an arc, and I'm using an arc because it has less resolution on it. So if you look at this, the wireframe, see what we have. The radius is too big, so 0 0.001. We just need this to render uh, the wires. Again, the lines are too much, and the resolution is too much. So three, about there. If your frame rate is dropping too low, uh, you could try reducing the the resolution even further and see how that if that helps something like that in the final render you can double or triple the count that is going to slow down uh, your viewport especially if you're still working so so now we need to give these some materials and uh, like if it's so but first, let's add that glass effect that we're seeing there. So for that, all you need is a UV sphere, something like this. Shade smooth. Then you can also grab a circle, fill it in, subdivide it. And I use a shrink wrap modifier. And this is going to be our target. Let me turn this into wireframe since we are not going to be seeing it. You can turn the wrap method to project. Now, if you push this down and scale, you get... I uh, want to scale it up to there and maybe even give it a subdivision. I can hide this uh, into a, a collection so that we're not seeing it. So shade smooth. I, I can now scale this and uh, get that lens effect. So give it some keyframes. And there we have the lens effect. We're going to need some solidify. Maybe push this above like this. Let's look at some materials here. Look at this from here. Let's set up some lighting. I'm going to grab an area light just like that. Now this should get a glass material, BSDF. And uh, this is going to be a disc. And uh, we're going to render this in cycles. Yeah, already see what we're having. Now let's work on the materials for this. This is our shader. And this is our geometry nodes. The lines or the path. Uh, this is our path. We can do a set material here. I create that material. Let's call it lights. Set it here. Now we want each path to have a different color. So I'm going to go here before we turn this into a mesh and capture other splines. So capture spline and uh, I want a random value for each spline. So I just connect this like that and uh, store that into after the mesh, store, store this into a named attribute, call it random, and just connect this value to that. And uh, we can now capture that attribute, get that attribute random. Here, yeah. we should be able to see that uh, each strand now gets a random color that is in the range of whatever we have here. If I play with the seed, it changes as well, so that's good. Now we can use a, a color ram to set up some colors. The interpolation is going to be constant. So we need some blue, that, some orange, 
and white again you need a lot of points and uh, if your PC can't handle that just go before the trim before the trim and do a resample curve so that you don't have too many points and that should help a bit now we can even increase the count let's try 2000 okay one thing I noticed is that uh, if you use the emission it doesn't really render very well but uh, if you use hair it gives you better results I can even just add some light in the center here I don't want this light to be in the reflection there so I'm going to go in here go in the settings visibility remove it from the transmission just like that and yeah, another thing we could do is give these balls an emissive material so I'll just do another material call it emit use an emission shader and in the geometry nodes here set it use a set material and call it emit and uh, here since these are instances we can use an object info node and uh, connect the random to the color that should give each ball a random color and uh, I so and just connect the random to that so that each point has a random value and uh, I can even scale these downs down a bit uh, 0 0.01 but uh, make them more powerful emission more, more stronger like that we can also add a line in the middle there a circle like that give it an emit and uh, just give it a, a bevel in the geometry uh, the rest is just viewport compositing and uh, let me show you that in the, the final render I made so yeah so if we go to the compositor here you can see what I did let me first disable everything this is how things look without any compositing so the first thing I did is uh, is created a glare to give that to give this effect then added it on top of the image that then did some color balance and uh, some chromatic aberration with the lens distortion node I uh, adjusted the curves a bit and uh, added a vignette with an ellipse mask we had and then I rendered if you're creating a scene with a lot of crowds moving animated and reacting to things try out this procedure crowds add-on for blender uh, that has a lot of presets for different animations I think you might find it very useful and uh, the assets are usable for every other type of scene you don't only have to use it for crowds I can also just have characters in your scenes for this uh, the characters are animated and well posed with clothes so yeah that's it thank you for watching see you in the next video